ever since I've been using an Atomic, I've always used either Lavazza Rosa, pre-ground, or Illy. Um, it's the perfect grind for this machine and makes a lovely cup of coffee. But recently, um, for my darling wife's birthday, I bought her a grinder, this grinder here. And I thought I'd do a quick video just in case you have got an Atomic and you're thinking of getting a grinder, what my experiences of this particular grinder were and how it relates to the Atomic. So this is a Sage Pro grinder, costs about £200 um, from eBay. You can occasionally pick these up second hand, but I would be slightly wary of doing that, even if you know you read something that says likely used, because this grinder will be used at least once a day if you're having one cup of coffee or maybe more. So even if you've only had it for a month or two, there's a lot of moving parts in these grinders. And personally, this is one of those things I would get as new. This grinder comes with two um, group holders. There's a big one and a small one. And for the Atomic, you're going to want to use the small one. The idea is that the group just clicks in there like that, holds it perfectly. Now, a good feature of this is, um, if you manage to spill coffee grinds everywhere, which is quite easy to do, um, these bits come out magnetically like this, and that clicks back in there like so. The top bit also comes off magnetically. It's quite a strong magnet. You'll see it's got a magnet on the back there. And once again, that makes for very easy cleaning. Now, after a lot of experimentation um, with the Atomic, what I found was that basically this knob on the side here will adjust the grind, okay? So as you turn it towards you, you'll find the grind gets coarser. So if you were making percolated coffee, etc., or espresso. Now, for the Atomic coffee machine, we have it practically on the very last dial. It's grind size number two. Um, we've got it on shot number one, and the timer, if you, if you turn this here, this will adjust how long the machine grinds for. If you set that to 22 seconds, one shot, number two, you will find that you get a pretty much perfect amount of coffee in there like this. Okay, and that stops automatically. Now it is pretty important that you tamp the coffee with this machine. And you've got to tamp it quite hard as well. You have to go overboard. And there you go, that's a nice smooth surface there. On this 22 second setting, you do get some spillage, but the coffee grinder comes with a little jar and we normally just put that spillage in there and obviously you can if you're going camping or you're going away etc you can actually grind bigger batches of coffee the coffee beans themselves they go in the top here um, and this just twists and locks on and then this seals nicely with a rubber seal the good thing about this coffee grinder is it fits under standard work surface so you can slide it out the way comes with a little brush as well. I think this brush is rather than cleaning the actual machine, this is for cleaning the actual burrs. Now, a lot of cheap coffee grinders will have blades inside that spin around and basically slice the beans up. This has got proper burrs in it. It's very controllable. And certainly the initial, um, my initial thoughts are it's been absolutely excellent. If you've got an Atomic, you'll know this already, but always empty out the old water before you make a new coffee. I always empty it into the jug so I can see exactly how much um, lime scale, etc., is coming out of the machine so I know when to clean it. Obviously, depending on what kind of coffee you're making, will depend on how much water you're putting in. I normally just put about an inch of water in the jug. Um, if you were making sort of an Americano, etc., you'd have a much coarser grind and you would put much more water in but we just generally put a small amount of water in and then you'll get two strong shots from one brew. One thing I noticed straight away once we started grinding our own coffee is that the this machine now is working under much higher pressure presumably because the grind is finer and there's a much bigger pressure build up before the water is forced through the coffee grinds so initially 
we would get some water just dribbling down the side here into the jug and obviously that's going to ruin the coffee. So what I've done is I've just put a new top seal on this atomic and I happen to have all the sort of spare atomic seals here, but the top seal is actually the same size as the Bialetta machines. Those are the hexagonal aluminium machines. So if you do have that problem, you can just go out and get a Bialetta um, machine. And the other thing I noticed is that you have to actually tighten the group handle slightly more than you would do normally because the, the pressure is that much higher and you've got to make sure you've got a good seal at the top there. One of the most common issues that people have and one of the most common questions that's asked is um, the loss of steam pressure and the pressure on your machine is basically determined by a number of things. Let's just assume for one moment that your machine is clean inside and doesn't have any issues, okay? One of the biggest determining um, factors on pressure is the heat source, okay? The hotter the heat source, the more pressure you'll get. If you try and make an atomic coffee on one of those old style electric cookers, you'll probably struggle because the heat is just not enough. So put it on the biggest gas ring possible without having flames licking up the side. The other thing that will determine your pressure is how fine your grind is. The coarser the grind, the less steam pressure you'll get. The finer the grind, the more steam pressure you'll get up to a limit. If you have too fine a grind, the coffee won't be able to come through and you'll end up blowing steam out of this safety valve here. Similarly, um, what will determine the pressure is how hard you tamp. Now you can actually get spring-loaded tampers, so you're tamping exactly the same size every time. We tend to tamp not super duper hard, just enough to bring the coffee below the um, basket and give it a nice firm puck in there. Because the pressure is going to be that much higher, the amount of milk that you're going to need in the jug is actually much less because um, it's going to expand much more. So previously we would have maybe a centimetre or half a centimetre higher level in the jug, but I'm going to have this just below where the spout starts on this jug. starting to see the coffee coming through ideally what you want is rather than a drip like that you want a steady rat tail if you're just getting coffee dripping through like that it means your grind is too fine or you've tamped it too hard but as the pressure builds that dripping will hopefully turn into one beautifully smooth rat's tail just starting to get a more continuous rat tail coming out of there now it's quite difficult to capture on this camera but that is coming out nicely now the other thing I noticed is that when you grind your own coffee you're going to get a much better crema now on this particular machine the atomic that crema is not going to last because this jug here is sitting on the hot aluminium base and those little crema bubbles are all going to burst you could get yourself a little silicon a mat just to put between the two of those if you wanted to keep that crema and that would keep the crema on your machine but you can see that's coming out beautifully well now this is what the coffee grounds look like after they've been run through you'll notice that there's a very even uniform surface there there's no big hole in the middle once you hear the machine changing sound first of all let the wet steam out you can see that's got some Serious pressure this machine. The higher the pressure, the easier it is to get a silky smooth milk. You'll say there's absolutely no problem with the pressure on this machine here. Just give it a little tap like that, that'll get rid of any of the big bubbles. And the first thing to do is always run a sponge around there, it makes it a lot easier cleaning it now than later. In the cups, make sure you've warmed them up. We happen to have a boiling water tap, so it's very easy. Always warm the cups before you make a coffee. Once you've cleaned the end nozzle, let the steam out, that, then that clears the holes and make sure they don't get blocked up with milk. A nice thick espresso. This milk has been standing slightly too long. I should 
really stir that with a spoon. If you leave the milk standing, what happens is you'll get this effect. So you'll get a big globule of milk coming out like that, which is not good, as anyone will tell you. What you need to do is pour the milk straight away, otherwise you lose that silky smoothness. Yeah, this is not going to win any awards at all. In fact, anybody watching this who works in a coffee shop is going to be quite appalled with my coffee, but you can't win them all. Get a quick bit of Santa Claus in there. The coffee that we use comes from Wogan Coffee. It's fair trade, organic coffee, roasted in small batches that's so never older than two weeks. The beans that you're going to get in the supermarket tend to have much longer shelf life. So if you are interested, this is a local Bristol based company, make excellent coffee. My wife, who runs a restaurant, swears by this coffee here. Um, and that's just a very short video on using the Sage Pro Grinder, which we have found to be excellent. If you've never seen an atomic coffee machine before, there's only one place in the world you can buy these new, and that is Bond Trading on Oxford Street in Sydney, Australia. And they sell all the parts, and they're the only place in the world that sells these. They're handmade in Italy, shipped over to Australia, finished in Australia. As I say, that shop's been going for about 40, 50 years. Um, if you're lucky enough to see one of these on eBay with the steam arm, etc., you're going to be paying anywhere between, I would say, £150 if you're extremely lucky, up to about £350. Much more than £350, you're much better off buying a brand new one, which I believe were about $500 Australian dollars. You can check that on the Bond Trading website. Incidentally, if you do buy a second-hand one, you're almost certainly going to have to replace these knobs, these seals, etc. So do bank on spending, I don't know, between 20 to $40 or pounds on seals, etc.